you ever wondered how civilizations shift in search of the utopic? I've spent decades advocating for human rights and sustainability as a conceptual artist and lawyer. My approach was subtle. I infused messages into my paintings, photography, writing, and film, hoping to tip the scales slightly in the right direction. But a few years ago, as I stared into the abyss of a new painting, I thought maybe there was a way to think bigger and act louder. Could I apply my ideals to build a dynamic infrastructure for a theoretical place? What would a more enlightened place look like? Could we be healthier, happier, and smarter? Could we be equitable? Could we be sustainable? How would the government function? How would the legal system work? From these questions, I began to build the Free Republic of California. California seemed like a good starting point. I'm from here, and have you seen this place? It's the fifth biggest economy in the world. It's Yosemite and Big Sur. It's the Golden Gate and the Hollywood sign, the beach and the mountains, the redwood and the live oak. It has a governmental, legal, and economic system. It's simply an amazing canvas. So with a life's worth of information bouncing around in my mind and this beautiful canvas itching for paint, I embarked on the journey of my faux nation. I started with the color palette, just blue and green. Blue for peace in the Pacific, green for the environment and sustainability. I did not choose red. Red, Edward Bernays determined, is the most effective color for the manipulation of populations. So it wasn't an option for me. Sorry, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and well, Ted. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Next was the font. I chose a font that's only recently been completed as an alphabet. It's called Optician Sands. You may recognize it from your eye doctor or the DMV because these are the letters we use as a society to determine if one has vision. With the font colors in place, I went wild. A new seal, a new flag resembling the horizon, an environmental kaleidoscope, posters, lawn signs, buttons, clothing, many featuring pertinent and romantic slogans such as pacifist pacificist. I'll stir the silence here and there, and the most American of dreams. In this process, my focus tightened on the need for certain basic necessities in my society, health, education, and sustainability. If we could provide for these basic needs, I thought our potential would become endless. My endeavor became a value-driven analysis where the value to the collective took precedent over the value to any individual. But it was quickly apparent that a benefit to the collective also benefited the individual. The economy would grow, taxes would go down, less people would be jailed, and we could all live longer. To prove this theory, the Free Republic needed a constitution and a budget. I worked on the constitution for months, writing and rewriting, editing and editing and editing. And in the end, I had a constitution that covered everything the governmental structure, regulatory bodies, elections, finances, security, equality, privacy, education, health, and sustainability, to cover just a few. I was so proud of it that I even published it in pocket form, thinking everyone would want to carry it around and wave it with pride. <laughs> but no matter how glorious th this document was, it needed the numbers to back up the policies. So. I drafted a budget using the 2019 California and U.S. federal budgets as starting points. I found that we could provide a lot more for our community by reallocating tax revenues paid by Californians in a couple of ways. I learned that Californians are footing the bill for a lot, and I mean a lot, of defense spending and a disproportionate amount of support for other states. In 2019, Californians contributed $93 billion to the federal defense budget, whereas in the Free Republic of California, I allocated $23 billion for defense, saving $70 billion a year. Now, a $23 billion defense budget would still put the Free Republic of California in the top 15 defense budgets of the world. Meanwhile, the U.S. would remain the largest defense budget in the world by nearly threefold. 
And just to clarify, defense and military are not synonymous. Defense funding can be spent on medical research, infrastructure growth, or exploring space, for example. Similarly, the U.S. tax revenue distribution is imbalanced. In this imbalance, Californians pay $80 billion more than they get. So I reallocated that $80 billion in my budget as well. With this collective $150 billion surplus, the world became our oyster, especially in terms of those core values of health, education, and sustainability. In regards to health, my Constitution states the Free Republic of California shall have the healthiest, happiest, and longest living society possible. To that end, those who cannot obtain the means necessary for a life of dignity shall have the right to receive indispensable subsistence, shelter, and care. What this means is that no one, and I mean no one, shall go uncared for. The amazing thing is, not only is this the right thing to do, it also costs us less and earns us more in the long run. For example, in Japan, a country with universal health care, the cost of health care is half of what it is in the U.S. And what's the result? The Japanese live six years longer than Americans do. Switching to a system like the Japanese also brings with it a tidal wave of direct medical expense savings to the citizenry, totaling over $138 billion a year. The cost of switching to a system like the Japanese, meanwhile, is less than $25 billion a year, which amounts to less than 4% of the Free Republic's annual budget. So for this minimal upfront investment, we could all be living longer and having thicker wallets. The Free Republic budget also allocated the all-time largest commitment to low-income housing and homelessness support and accounts for all health and human services we have today such as Social Security, Veterans Affairs, and public housing. As we become healthier, sheltered, and well-fed, our minds could be free to seek enrichment, which leads me to education. For education, my Constitution states, an equal opportunity to education free of charge is guaranteed. The more educated a populace, the more the possibilities. The educated are emboldened to start companies, invent things, become doctors, teachers, and artists. What's the cost of such, amazing, such an amazing opportunity? It's not as much as you'd think. An extra $7.7 .7 billion annually would pay the higher education tuition of all Free Republic citizens. I'm talking public, private, in-state, out-of-state, four-year or two-year institutions. This amounts to less than 2% of the annual budget. So for this tiny sliver of our spending, Tuition could be eradicated, allowing our people to develop to their fullest potential and compete globally. So, we're becoming more educated, getting healthier, living longer, saving more money. But what, what's all that worth if the Earth is both burning and flooding? My Constitution states, protection of the environment, nature, and biodiversity is a basic human right and is the responsibility of all government officials, agencies, and the populace itself. To that end, the Free Republic of California shall be carbon neutral and fossil fuel independent within 10 years of the ratification of this Constitution. Look, we're reaching a moment where there will be no options. I have a three-year-old and now a one-week-old, and I don't want them to witness environmental mass extinction. Sustainability must be considered a basic human right, and we need dra dramatic change immediately. This worry was, of course, unfathomable to the U.S. Constitution's drafters. They couldn't imagine a car or a phone, let alone climate change. But I believe we've reached a pivotal point where change needs the seriousness of a constitutional mandate. The Free Republic budget allocates $28 billion for that effort. This is over 39 times the US EPA's per capita budget. I call it Habitat Environ. Now, a constitutional mandate with this massive budgetary support isn't the answer, but it's certainly a start. We managed to land on the moon with less technology than is in your phones, so I believe this moonshot is feasible too. By the way, with all these added benefits for the collective, 
citizens of the free republic would also pay 5% less in taxes than Californians did in 2019. I could, I could speak for days about the free republic of California. There's so much more to share. And maybe I will right now. That's, um, but the key question is, what does this idea of the free republic really mean? It means there are possibilities for grand change. It means we can think on a large scale. It means there are economic advantages to a value-driven society that allow us to dramatically improve the lives of ourselves, our friends, and our neighbors. It means we can create the societies we dream of. The Free Republic's not a solution, but it shows that reimagining our future is possible. Imagine what we can do together. Thank you.